my iPod Classic was dead or dying, but I couldn't let it go. So, how to replace the iPod Classic's battery? How to change the iPod hard drive? Can I use an SSD or SD card as storage? You will see how to open an iPod Classic, how to change the battery, how to replace the hard disk with an iFlash storage card. And because I've made some mistakes, I can also show you how to replace the LCD screen and how to replace the headphones jack too. Now I have a brand new 7th generation 256GB solid state iPod Classic. I am Everson and this is Geek Detour. Apple stopped selling the iPod Classic in September 2014, and it instantly became a collector's item on a premium price. My iPod is the very last model of the classic line, the 6th generation, second revision, from 2009, with 160GB on a thin enclosure. Most websites call it the 7th generation. You can still buy one of these on eBay on a sealed box by around 500 US dollars. This iPod was very dear to me, it was a special gift for my wife, and I used it very much during the past six years, but recently it had two problems. The battery couldn't even let me hear a complete album anymore, and the hard drive was dying. Different from the iPhone and iPod Touch, the iPod Classic uses a magnetic hard disk. You can actually hear the disk spinning and the mechanical heads moving inside. Listen. It loads a few songs in memory, then it turns the disk off to save battery. Could you hear it? Let's skip a few songs. But my iPod's disc struggled trying to load the next songs and the music stopped for a while. The plan was to open it, replace the battery, remove the hard disk, switch into some solid-state storage solution, close it and be happy. It shouldn't take more than 30 minutes to do it all and get ready to fill it with songs again, unless you buy some wrong part, or use the wrong tool, or something breaks. And apparently I got the whole bad luck package. Attention. The iPod Classic is very delicate inside. Don't blame me if you damage your iPod. Now we can go shopping. First, battery. You can find a lot of battery replacement options. I bought mine on Amazon. You can find iPod batteries on iFixit too. Most batteries will come with some nylon opening tools, but don't get excited about them. You will see why in a minute. Second, storage. Luckily, I found the iFlash iPod adapters with many storage options, compact flash and SATA SSDs, SD cards and micro SD cards, which is perfect because large capacity SD cards are way cheaper. You need to check if your iPod is one of the compatible models and if there are any limitations. For example, my wife's iPod Classic would only recognize and use up to 128 gigabytes. And for every adapter, there is a list of recommended, tested cards. As I write this, there is a new adapter called iFlash Quad. Back then, the iFlash Duo was the best option available, the one I bought. One week later, I received mine, and oh boy, I got impressed! These are projected by a single guy named Tarkan Akdem. Isn't it impressive? At last, opening tools. I never opened an iPod before, so I bought everything. Nylon pry tools, metal ones guitar picks, tiny screwdrivers, plastic sticks. Here on YouTube you can find a bunch of videos with people showing how to open iPods using these tools. They are either suffering trying to open the iPods or lying about it, showing iPods that were clearly opened before. Trust me, this is the tool for the job, the iSesamo flexible steel blade. It is so bad I learned about this tool much later, after I, well, keep watching. Once you got everything you need, you can open the iPod. Up to the fifth generation, the front panel was made of plastic, very easy to open, but the sixth and seventh generations are all metal, they are really difficult to open. So this is me, trying to do the same things I watched on the videos. By the way, I made a playlist with the best videos I found. They tell you to work with two nylon tools around the iPod, doing several passes, widening the gap. But this is bad advice. I spent 40 minutes widening the gap. It was already deforming the sides and the cover didn't get loose. I was trying everything and I ended up breaking the whole clip strip in one of the laterals. All wrong. Here is what you must know to open the iPod. There are 11 retaining clips. I also made a PDF you can get in the description and print, 
so you can know exactly where the clips are and disengage each one of them using the eye sesamo tool. Be careful, the eye sesamo is not exactly sharp, but it's not dull either. The tip has a special shape, the blade gets in really easy. And then you can push it vertically to the bottom on every clip, disarming them. I recommend you to start unsetting the top clip, then the two bottom ones, then the four clips of each side. It might be useful to have guitar picks to keep clips from gripping back. Knowing where the clips are and using the right tool makes it way easier. Be patient and good luck. When you finally open it, be careful. There are two delicate flat cables connecting both parts. You open the back sideways just enough for you to disconnect the battery ribbon. Then you open the iPod like a book. There is no reason to disconnect the second ribbon. What I did wrong. By not understanding how the clips worked, I started forcing one of the sides using a tool between the clip metal strip and the back plate. I eventually broke them apart. What a disaster. The headphones jack is screwed in two places. One of them is in this strip that I broke. And without those clips, I would need to find a different way to keep my iPod closed. Replacing the battery is really simple. You just need a plastic tool underneath and force it up slowly. The battery is kept in place with just an adhesive. Just be careful with the hold bottom ribbon cable that also passes under the battery. What I did wrong. I was ambitious. So I ordered a battery with a greater mAh capacity, not realizing it would be thicker as well. It was made for the previous thicker generation. I had to put away everything and wait to receive a second battery with the proper size. Replacement batteries already come with the adhesive tape. Peel it and you can glue the new battery on the same spot. To replace the iPod hard drive, you need to release the ribbon from the ZIF connector. Hinge open the plastic locking bar using a plastic tool. Be extra careful. When the latch is opened, the ribbon cable should be easy to slide out. Insert the SD cards you will use on the iFlash board. Connect the iFlash board to the ZIF ribbon cable you just released. Be sure it is evenly inserted all the way in and lock down the plastic tab. Insert the battery ribbon in place and secure its connector. Verify the iPod is turning back on and ready to be restored. Then you can align the back cover in position and force it down, applying some force evenly, closing the case. You should hear the clips locking. Now you should be able to restore your iPod Classic and fill it back with songs. But that was not my whole story. I waited a couple of weeks for the correct battery. When it finally arrived, I put all back together and the screen simply had an ugly line across. I checked for some bad contact in vain. The screen was really broken. I probably twisted, forced the cover with the display during my fight trying to open it the first time. So I ordered a screen replacement. Surprisingly, it was not expensive. It came on a small box written iPhone 4. <laughs> and I initially thought it was scratched, but it was just the protection film. To replace the screen, you must disassemble the iPod completely. The main board is fixed in place with adhesive, you slowly separate. Remember I completely broke one of the clip strips? To close my iPod, I decided for a rubber glue that holds really strong and yet it would be possible to remove it if I ever needed to open my iPod again and indeed I had to. Just after a few hours listening to music I got this screen. To make the story short, the SD card was dead. Later I found other people that also had problems with that particular card. I bought a new SD card, different brand. The last problem I had was during my attempts to fix the headphones jack without the lateral screwing point. Maybe I bent it or whatever, but the integrated click speaker stopped sounding and the earbud controls were not working properly anymore. So I found a replacement set on eBay. It was a full set, including the headphones jack, the click speaker and the hold switch, all together ending on a contact ribbon. 
At this point, I was utterly in panic about doing something wrong. You know, fix it here and damage something else. Getting stuck on some fixing iPod Groundhog Day. But it wasn't the last time. I could glue it back together and on the next day it was all perfect. The whole project was not cheap. Mostly because I had to buy the SD card twice, and two batteries, and a new screen, and a new headphones jack. You could argue this is not even my iPod anymore, and you would have a point. But I look at it and I see my wife's engraved message. I remember the day she gave this gift to me, and I'm so glad I will continue using it. Fifteen years ago, carrying your whole music collection physically in your pocket was a daring idea. Now it is just nostalgic, isn't it? Wow, it's been two years since I recorded everything I just saw. Time flies. But my iPod, my iPod Classic is still working. The battery, the SD card, luckily is, is still okay. And I have all my music library stored inside of this, which I like really much instead of some mysterious place in the cloud. It's not that I don't like streaming, it's that I like to own my music. Uh, does it make any sense? Tell me in the comments if you still have one of these, or at least if you still store your songs in your computer. I hope you found this video useful, or at least entertaining. <laughs> Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and thank you so much for watching.